Hi everyone, so I'm Jean-Marc Lazar, one of the founders and CEO of Open Datasoft. And uh, Bertrand Masson is the founder and CEO of Mosquitoes. So we are going to talk about APIs because, uh, as you notice, a lot of persons are talking about data, big data analytics, predictive analysis, and so on. But uh, all that stuff wouldn't work if there was not interoperability and data to fit these kind of systems. So at Open Datasoft, which is a software as a service solution designed uh, for five years to help companies to open their data, to turn them into APIs and then to fin application and big data, we think that the data has no value if it can be shared. If it cannot be shared, you keep your data in your silos. You think that the data has value, but uh, in fact, there is no value in still data. So what we believe uh, is what one of the most important thing is to help the companies, uh, big corporations as SMEs, uh, to share and expose their data so that innovators, startups, but also internal uh, developers can reuse easily the data coming from outside, but also from all the different systems. But what we noticed five years ago, even if the companies were involved into data lakes projects, big data projects, the data was always kept into silos, organizational silos, technical silos, also not so easy to get the data from outside. And what we decided to avoid these companies to see their data be become data swamps, so not useful, is to help them to organize. So we decided to create a company. So we are proud to be now uh, a 50 person company with uh, more than 100 customers in 15, actually, uh, 15 countries, and also recognized by IDC and Gartner to be one of the most in innovative companies in smart cities area. So what we do, and uh, actually I don't like this schema because it seems to be very complicated and technical, but what we do is to allow to business users, so persons who don't have any technical skills, business persons, to manage their data. So to just like you are when you are in a, custom, in a content management system, to decide which data you take from your silos and who you will share this data with in, uh, in what kind of relationships, paying mode, open data mode, and uh, with, uh, with uh, some specific grants, for example, the number of API code you can do. So that's what we allow. It's a, just like a shopping system, but for data. So our customers are not selling or opening uh, T-shirts or shoes, but data, and we help them to do it very easily in a multi-cloud mode because we help them also to store the data at the right place. For example, when we, w when we work with a big company like Veolia, which has uh, big topics about uh, getting data from water quality. When they operate their uh, solution in the US, they have to keep the data, for example, in the US, in Asia, in Asia, and in Europe, in France. And we help them to locate the data and their APIs in each part of this country, thanks to our multi-cloud approach, which is essential if you have to, to, to keep a, a very good governance of your data. So we work with a big player in infrastructure, so we are an official partner of AWS, as we are also the same thing with more local uh, infrastructure operator in France with Outscale, for example. So it allows us to, to work with uh, many kind of companies that uh, more than telling you who are our customers is to show you that it's not only a question of public bodies, because when we talk about opening data, Probably you think first that the city's administration have to open their data because of transparency, accountability. But wha what you have to notice is that company like Total, like Saint-Gobain and so on, have also a strategy of opening their data to startups and innovators, but also to become a kind of citizen company by showing through their data uh, what they actually do for improving uh, energy consumption and to be more sustainable. So we help the, all that customers to make their data valuable outside. To give you one concrete example of uh, what I said, maybe more theoretically, when you think about a smart city project, for example, this is the Place de la Nation, if you know Paris, which is one of the seven the squares which will be highly transformed in the coming years. And you want to know concretely what's happening. 
not uh, okay I think there is uh, two crowded places or not which is just a feeling but you need the data and the data is coming from from where from the municipality from the garbage operator for the transportation operator so RTP with data from the underground from the air quality sensors and so on and all these systems are operated by different companies some private some public some startups or big companies and what we do is to help in this case the municipality is to gather all this data and then to feed the analytic system by Cisco which is the city of Paris partner in this project to make some predictive things and just to simulate what could be the place and the square of nation uh, thanks to some uh, decision and political one. So you see that the data is the base of the knowledge of the city and we are, f uh, we are in the role to be the hub of the city to gather all this data. So you see that bringing this kind of interoperability through APIs and collecting and republishing data is a key component in any data and big data strategy and especially in smart city project. But to give you more concrete example of what it means opening data and I will then pass the, 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 the mic to, to my colleague. Uh, for example, in Lille, MEL is the acronym for Metropole Européenne de Lille. Uh, when they opened just a few weeks ago some information about the bikes, just like they live in Paris, uh, in real time, thanks to our platform, maybe two weeks later there was a widget for the person who, who has a Garmin uh, uh, watch. And for example, if you are a runner, you can see if there will be a bike at the end of your run and to go back to you if you are not... Uh, <laughs> Uh, in a good shape to, to go back by yourself. So this is a concrete example of what it means opening data. So uh, you open the data, some developers and innovators make the widget and it is available on, a, on the app store of, uh, of Garmin and then you can experiment this uh, new experience without spending any, any euro by the municipality and making startups innovate. So that is what opening data is concretely from a, a use. Just a second example. Maybe there are so, some controversies about uh, linky uh, sensors and meters, but uh, you know that now some information from our consumption are automatically pushed to the operator, like Enedis. Uh, and what we do is to, to collect this data and help Enedis, for example, to decide uh, uh, with the municipality in the city of Nantes, for example, which data can be shared with who. And they do it very easily. And for example, you decide to open some part of this data, so making some anonymization, aggregation, and bringing this data to everybody just to show how the energy is uh, evolving in France. Maybe in a less aggregated way, uh, sh in a private mode share with the municipality, which can now monitor in real time exactly the consumption of energy of all the public uh, buildings, uh, very important, and then bringing the private data to the person, and more concretely, the, the company, which has the linky uh, sensors uh, in, in his building. So you can now uh, do the, the logistics of the data very easily, as easy uh, as you could do with uh, classical content on the web. And last but not least, uh, of course, but building together with all these customers, so public one and private one, we're setting up a kind of network of data for real. And when we started working with Saint-Gobain, they were a lot interested by all the data provided by all our other customers. And then we can uh, help them to get this uh, external data inside their own system and to merge it with, for example, CRM. And very concrete example, when they decided just to send some uh, information to their customers, for example, based on the weather forecast, there will be a lot of wind this weekend, so you can maybe uh, uh, cancel some uh, works uh, because it is too risky. Uh, they were able to do that very, very easily just because they had the right data with the right API ready to do and it brings uh, innovation and agility in any b big company. So what's, that's what we, we think about the revolution of data. But of course, uh, it could not be done if uh, there, was, there, were, there wouldn't be a, a uh, a tight connection between the back office of the system and uh, the more internal uh, business APIs. And <laughs> Thanks very much, Jean-Marc. So Jean-Marc explained to you, data is changing the way we do business, but nothing in this world goes if IT doesn't go with it. 
So that's the part Mosquitoes is doing. We are a software vendor. We're doing an IPaaS and API management. And I'm going to explain to you why you need an IPaaS and an API management platform to change the way you do business and invent new way of uh, new customer journeys and new offers, new products. The first issue of data is that it's a complex world. We partner with uh, Jean-Marc and his fabulous team on open data, but data comes from anywhere. It comes from mobile apps, it comes from your B2B partners, it comes from your cloud applications like Salesforce. It might come from IoT in the coming years and you got Watson and all the artificial intelligence. In a word, it comes from anywhere and you need to be able to connect anywhere, anytime to any kind of application. Plus, you just can't say that the old world does not exist anymore. SAP will stay in your plants for ages. You are still using a vending machine at point of sales, and you're not going to change it in one month or two months. So you need to compose and that the first thing <laughs> that the first thing you need to do is you need to have a platform that helps you compose your data together and give them a real sense. I'll give you an example. That's the role of the integration platform as a service. It has three values. It helps you connect any application. It connects IoT, but it also connects Salesforce. It connects SAP. So there's a whole set of connectors to accelerate the connection to data. It transforms this data because there is no format uh, that is the same. Data that comes from uh, Watson doesn't, is not the data that SAP is expecting. So you need to transform this. And you also need to orchestrate this data to give it a sense. We at Mosquitoes do this very well. And we do this that well that Gartner has already identified uh, us as a niche player among the more than 100 players who are in the top 20 in the world. So we're doing this quite good. Second issue you're going to have is that the number of data explodes. You, you just can't imagine how many ideas your business is going to bring you. And after VivaTech, I'm sure that many, many CIOs are going to have odd weeks. Having all these business people, I've seen, I've seen open data stuff, I've seen plenty of good ideas. We need to invent. Yes, but the CIO has got this feeling. He's still alone. He's still seen as a cost in the enterprise. He is really alone. So he needs to change the way he's doing business with his own business. He needs to automate the way he exposes data. That's the role of API management. You expose your data and you change the way you interact with your internal business and with your, with your ecosystem. You don't wait for the business to go to VivaTech and say, I've seen this innovation and I'm going to need your data. You reverse the question and say, well, me as an IT person, my information system is able to provide you these kind of data. If you use this route, it's going to be secured, it's going to be automated. I'm going to be able to measure the consumption of data that your partner is going to make. And maybe I'm going to be able to, uh, to help you enter the API economy and make money out of this data. And doing so, I'm going to enter a sort of self-service data economy where customers go to a catalog of data that is provided by a customer and be able to choose it very easily. Let's take an example. If you go at Lowell's booth, you're going to see plenty of innovation. You got this connected airbrush that was presented in Las Vegas this year. What it does, you go to your, well, Jean-Marc and I, we don't go that often to the addresser, but you go to your favorite addresser and you got this brush that listens to your air. That's the exact thing it does. It just listens to your air. So what the IoT provides in terms of IT, what is the data? It's a sound. If I tell you that your hair are making sound, it's completely useless. You need iPass, you need CrossCut Platform to give you a sense. To give you the sense, you need to go and check what was the meteo of today, what was the weather of today. If it's, a t if it's very dry, your hair might be dry. It needs to be taken into account because your environment is going to change the way we're going to uh, analyze the sound. Then we take this sound, take it back to the back office of L'Oréal, analyze it, and discover what is the real issue of your hair. And not just giving you this advice, saying, well, your hair dries, which is interesting, but not that interesting. What you're really interested in is which product your adversary is going to use today 
to help you have better air, better, better look in the coming days. That's exactly the point of mosquitoes. That is exactly the role of a platform. Catch data anywhere in the world. These little objects like this, well, you don't see the screen. These little objects like this, a patch at La Roche-Posay, or mobile apps like Makeup Genius, they can be today deployed anywhere in the world. A consumer can be in Japan today, in Russia, in America, anywhere. You need a worldwide platform like CrossCut to connect this without knowing that someone is going to connect and be able to transform a data into a, an advice, in that case, a beauty advice. But actually, what you want to really do is transform data in terms of money and, make, and gain market share with your data. So that's what we do. Conclusion to you or to me? To you? Okay. Yeah, as a conclusion, you understood that together we take care from the journey of the data all along the journey. So from connecting the data from the... Uh, I don't know what is that object, actually. So, uh, <laughs> um, and to, towards the last mile. So we deal with the last mile of the data. You, you deal with uh, all this back office and securely managing the data. And most important in this day uh, where you, we take care about privacy, about keeping the data secured, uh, but also by making it available so that we can design new solutions. This is very important to, for Okay, let's say IT player in company, but also business users to understand exactly what's going on from collecting the data to how the data is used, how I can withdraw the data because the users tell me and it will become mandatory in Europe next year with GDPR. All the company will be able to do that. So if we, as a customer, I ask, remove my data, which are not useful for the service from all your data center. How could I do that if I have not integrated interoperable systems uh, to, to uh, thanks to our APIs to do that. So that's the role we want to play, and you want to say one word to end? Yeah, that's, as a conclusion, you need to make sure in that case of L'Oreal that the data you gain will not be shared with anyone that you don't want to. If I make a picture of your skin, picture of your hair, picture of anything of you, you as a consumer wants to make sure that, wants to be 100% sure that L'Oreal has built an architecture that protects your data. That's also the way we're going to change business, is having this confidence between brand and end consumers. And that's exactly what we do when we work with, uh, what you do when you work with open data stuff and mosquitoes. Thank you very much.